Hi guys. Well, it has gone from an 87 degree day heading towards a 46 degree night. 41 degrees between this afternoon and a couple hours from now here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is Sunday, May 22nd, 2022, and we all know what that means. We will get to that in a minute. So anyway, it's, it is, good Lord, it is 9.30 at night. I have had a busy weekend here at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Good Lord, but uh, we are making progress for the summer of 2022. So I am just now 9.30 on Sunday night uh, tuning into the mainstream media to see how the collapse of a planet is being played. Uh, and so I have picked out five stories here on the mainstream media. And no, monkey pox is not one of them, okay? You can go elsewhere in the doomosphere, I'm sure, <coughs> to find... Uh, find rants on monkey pox, but you're not going to find a rant on monkey pox at Collapse Chronicles. But uh, as I mentioned, I'm really glad to see that the comments have been returned to Yahoo News. You know, during Corona panic that uh, it just got so bad that Yahoo News wisely just killed the comment section, but now that the corona panic seems to have passed, they have brought the comments back up. And I think the comments are a fair barometer of how much people give a damn about the, you know, the collapse of a planet. So anyway, I'm getting ready to touch on five just... I just kind of threw a dart, picked out five. All right. And as I'm reading these, I'm going to let you guess. Okay. Two of these stories that I'm going to mention have zero comments. Not one human being on a planet of eight billion people have bothered to leave one single comment. One of the stories has 11 comments. One of the stories has 128 comments, and one of these stories has 388 comments. So we're going to start with, of course, as we all know what today is, uh, May 22nd is well, what is it? Uh, uh oh. What is it? May 22nd is. Today is the United Nations has declared Sunday to be the International Day for Biodiversity to raise awareness of the extinction risk facing animals and plants. Nearly a third, this is from the BBC, nearly one-third of all species on this planet are now endangered due to human activities. But don't worry, later this year governments will meet to come up with a long-term plan to reverse the threat to life on Earth in all its varieties at the United Nations Biodiversity Conference in China. Yes, the United Nations meeting in China to talk about how to save the planet from the six mass extinction. So anyway, the BBC breaks all of this down. Uh, good Lord, 
So how many species are at risk of extinction? One in four species are now at risk of extinction. I don't know whether that includes humans or not. Of the species assessed by the International Union of Conservation of Nature, 40% of amphibians are ready to go the way of the dodo. 33% of corals, 33%, yeah, right. 31% of sharks and rays, 25% of mammals, probably uh, including humans, and 14% of birds. Yes. So, uh, what are the countries trying to agree to in China? It is hoped an agreement can be reached to stop what scientists are calling the sixth mass extinction event, you know, unfolding on the planet today. Governments will try to agree on a long-term action plan to be called the post-2020 biodiversity framework. Its key aim is to slow down the rate to slow down the rate of biodiversity loss by the year 2030 and to make sure that by 2050, that by 2050, biodiversity is, quote, valued, conserved, restored, and delivering benefits essential for all people. There you go. Then it points out, let's, you know, the old one million wildlife species now threatened with extinction, two million square kilometers of natural habitat have been lost since 2000. That's about eight times the size of the uh, UK. So what kind of action is being proposed by the United Nations meeting in China. Four goals. Increased conservation. Resources used as sustainably as possible. More equal sharing of natural resources and increased financial support for biodiversity protection. Yes. Okay. Anyway, it goes on for there, but I'm pretty sure this is a no-brainer. Okay. Zero comments on a planet of 8 billion. 11 comments. 128 comments or 310 comments. Well, obviously, guys, this is a no-brainer. Zero comments. Not one human being on planet Earth has commented about the United Nations meeting in China to save the planet from the sixth mass extinction. So much for uh, bringing awareness on International Biodiversity Day. Okay, which one shall we do next? Okay, this one is from the Anchorage Daily News in Alaska. The Beast Rig sets a drilling record for ConocoPhillips and cracks open a new reservoir, meaning a new reservoir of oil. Today, Dateline Today, on the International Day of Biodiversity, a rig nicknamed the Beast has set a long-distance drilling record in Alaska and unlocked oil from a new section of the western North Slope oil fields. 
Conoco Phillips said the reservoir of oil is expected to produce up to 20,000 barrels of oil per day, adding to Alaska North Slope oil production rates that lately have run near 500,000 barrels daily. Yes. The Doyon 26, a massive rig that ConocoPhillips ordered six years ago to tap a long known but especially remote oil accumulation, punched a horizontal, horizontal oil well into the earth for a distance of 6.7 miles. It's a new record! Alright! Yes. The new oil is flowing at unexpectedly good rates, about 10,000 barrels per day. Yes. There you go. <clears throat> the beast, the largest mobile land rig in North America, has even more potential with the possibility of drilling wells seven and a half miles long. Yes. Uh, quote, This project opens a new era we call growth without gravel, growth without gravel, where we can use extended reach technology to access 60% more acreage from one single drilling pad. There you go. Zero, 11, 128 or 310? Okay, the answer is 11 comments, 10 of which were cheering on the beast. That was the mainstream media with no trace of irony. Okay. I'm going to... Okay, how about this one from USA Today? All right. Coca-Cola unveils brand new bottles with caps attached. All right. Hoping to curb recycling concerns. No longer will consumers be troubled with a capless Coke bottle aiming to bolster recycling and curb misplacing nuisances, the Coca-Cola company said earlier this week in a news release that it is changing the way its bottles are manufactured. The first wave of a new era in Coke bottles began in the United Kingdom uh, earlier this week as the British arm of the company unveiled new plastic bottles with the cap attached. A slight but significant change from the long-standing twist caps unattached to the bottles. The company said its caps often end up in the trash and don't find their way to the recycling bin with their corresponding bottles, the new bottles are meant to make recycling the entire product much simpler. Yes. Quote, this one of these Coke guys, quote, this is a small change that we hope will have a big impact, ensuring that when consumers recycle our bottles, no cap gets left behind. 
the move comes on the heels of the European Union requiring that caps be attached to plastic bottles as part of their directive on single-use plastics. Yes. Uh, in case you did not know this, plastic waste largely fueled by bottles from companies like Coca-Cola is an environmental problem because plastics end up hurting marine life by showing up on beaches or in landfills. Zero, eleven, one hundred twenty-eight, or three hundred and ten comments on the new Coke bottle with the cap attached. If your guess was 310 comments, give yourself a gold star. The sixth mass extinction getting zero comments. The new Coke bottle cap getting 310. All right, we have two more, several versions of this. Quote, who cares if Miami is six meters underwater? I think this is the most intelligent question I have heard uh, in the mainstream media. Who cares if Miami is six meters underwater? HSBC banker under fire for dismissing climate warnings. Yes. An HSBC banker in charge of responsible investing has come under fire for suggesting, quote, apocalyptic warnings about climate change are, quote, unsubstantiated. Stuart Kirk uh, HSBC Asset Management made the remarks at a Financial Times moral, moral money event on Thursday. He said that throughout his 25-year career in the finance industry, there had always been some, quote, nut job warning about, quote, the end of the world. Yes, Mr. Kirk likened the climate crisis to the millennium bug, the feared widespread global computer glitch at the end of 1999. Quote, unsubstantiated, shrill, partisan, self-serving, apocalyptic warnings are always wrong. He wrote on a slide accompanying his presentation. He is also reported to have said, who cares if Miami is six meters underwater in 100 years, adding Amsterdam has been six meters underwater for ages. And that's a really nice place. We will cope with it. Close quote. Mr. Kirk did not question the science behind climate change, but suggested HSBC investors had more pressing concerns. Yes. His comments come amid growing um, cause about climate change among the public and increasing calls for banks and financial institutions to stop backing fossil fuels, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I guess he was sacked. Yes.
he is out of a job and I guess his boss said his remarks do not reflect the views of HSBC Asset Management in any way. He added that HSBC remains committed to reaching net zero emissions by 2050. Zero, 11, it was 188, or 310. Obviously, guys, well, we've already, it, it's down to the last two. Was that zero or 188 comments? Obviously, this is a no-brainer. The answer to the uh, question, how many people commented on an article titled, Who Cares If Miami Is Six Meters Underwater? That would be zero. So uh, we're going to wind up with this one. Uh, I have to admit, I thoroughly enjoyed this one. The single most intelligent article, well, I mean, well, it's an article about the single most intelligent politician on the planet coming out of Oklahoma, no less. This is from Business Insider. Hallelujah. 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 We have the single greatest idea I have ever heard promoted by a politician. An Oklahoma state representative proposed legislation that would mandate young men get mandatory vasectomies. Hell yes. You go, brother. This is Mickey Dollins, my hero. I don't normally pay attention to politicians, but this dude has my vote, even though I don't live in Oklahoma. Uh, all right. An Oklahoma state representative proposed an idea for legislation that would make vasectomies mandatory for young men in his state. Speaking before a floor of legislators, State Representative Mickey Dollins said on Thursday that he is thinking about introducing the legislation next year. Quote, I would invite you to co-author a bill that I am considering that would mandate that each male, when they reach puberty, get a mandatory vasectomy that is only reversible when they reach the point of financial and emotional stability. Well, I mean, I'm not crazy about the second part of that, but Halla Luya on the first part. Uh, anyway, take a wild guess how many comments. Well, we all know. I guess it is now uh, 189 comments. Uh, here is D. Uh, I love that idea. It's only fair. Yes. Uh, there you go. 13 thumbs up. Uh, here is Victoria. I love this. 24 thumbs up. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else? Here is not a bad idea, but make sure it's inclusive. There you go. Uh, 
Here is Deborah, 12 thumbs up. I agree, all males in the state of Oklahoma need this medical procedure immediately. Yes. Uh, here is just the comment, excellent. Yes. Um, let's see. Here is just yes. So, who else? Here is banning Viagra would help too. Yes. Uh, here is, it's nice to see that the left can remain level-headed, logical, and sensible. And there you go. Uh, all right. Uh, I, was, I was looking for a particular comment, but it might have been pulled down down. Uh, it takes a while to go through 188 comments. Uh, anyway, the uh, comment I was looking for has been yanked down. You can imagine what it said. Anyway, guys, I hope that uh, brings you a little bit up to date on what is going on on the planet on International Biodiversity Day and how many people give a damn. But anyway, I need to wrap this craziness up because I have a long week ahead of me at Bugs in a Jar Farm. Good Lord, what is it tomorrow? No telling. But I'm sure we'll think of something to rant about. And uh, as far as monkey pox, you will have to look elsewhere tomorrow in the Doomosphere <clears throat> to find rants on monkey pox. Yes, little dog? But are you ready for bed or what? He said, well, I am ready for bed like that. I'm tired of this ranting. It's 10 o'clock at night on a Sunday night, and it's my bedtime. Bye, guys.